All right, welcome to Just Make Art, a conversation about making art and the artist's journey with myself, Nathan Terborg, and my good friend, Ty Nathan Clark. We're just two artists trying to navigate the art world just like you. So mostly we're going to be talking about uh, various quotes, um, what they mean, and uh, how they apply to the artistic practice today. We're going to discuss a quote by Langston Hughes, and I'm really excited to talk about this one with you, Ty. Yeah. Um, so the quote goes like this. This is from Thank You, Man, which was a short story uh, that Langston Hughes wrote. And it goes like this. I have discovered in life that there are ways of getting almost anywhere you want to go if you really want to go. So with that, I'll turn it over to you to unpack this and take our first pass. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. And um, obviously we could unpack, you know, the short story, Thank You, Ma'am, and, you know, the meaning of, you know, that dialogue within that story um, that, you know, piggybacks on Langston Hughes' own story. For those of you that aren't familiar with Langston Hughes, you should be. Um, he is one of the most famous American writers, poets, social activists, playwrights, uh, columnists in the history of American literature. Um, a black American writer who should have a lot more recognition than he does. Um, and one of the earliest innovators of jazz poetry and most often known as one of the great leaders of the Harlem Renaissance. And I can guarantee you that somewhere within our episodes, we will end up talking about specific artists from the Harlem Renaissance in the twenties um, in Harlem, New York, because it should also get a lot more recognition than it does some beautiful artists uh, that represented that time um, and space. But wow. Um, what a quote, you know, taking that from a short story in literature and thinking about that in the terms of art and being a working artist and knowing that every artist out there, doesn't matter what level you're at, whether you are a beginning artist, an emerging artist, a mid-career artist, or an established artist, you have dreams, you have a vision of where you want your work to go. And so, you know, this quote, whew, I mean, this is a very powerful quote that came from a person at a time when the entire world or all of America was against him as a creator um, and as a human being, right? So you think of the roadblocks that a Langston Hughes had in Harlem in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, um, until he died far too young, the things he had to come up against just to get published, to create, to get his voice heard beyond just his community, which is where really it was initially only heard. You think about that as an artist, right? As a creator, you know, we have roadblocks that we, we don't even know exist as artists trying to get our work out there and trying to create. And so not to take anything away from Langston Hughes um, and his life at all, because we definitely are recognizing what he did, what he stood for and the movement he was a part of during the Harlem Renaissance and for black artists today, what he represents. Um, but let's shift this a little bit to just an average uh, discussion of artists in general. Um, when he says, I've discovered in life, there are more ways of getting almost anywhere you want to go if you really want to get there. This is a conversation you and I have a lot, right? That's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, well, so just to, to uh, not to bore people with the full backstory, but, um, you know, as somebody who's definitely very, you know, um, ambitious and achieve, achievement driven, um, you know, goals are important to me, you know, having a target <laughs> to, uh, to shoot mm -hmm. for. And, um, you know, being, you know, still very early in my, art my artistic practice, um, you know, having a sense of, uh, you know, what a, um, you know, low, medium and high goal or objective, you know, might be, you know, I know where I ultimately want to go. Um, but there's oftentimes I think in the, um, in the artistic, uh, you know, uh, the different twists and turns that the path might take, um, it's really difficult, you know, for somebody who's early on to have a sense of, you know, what's a reasonable sort of next step, right? So that's the context that, that you and I have discussed this sort of bigger idea, um, you know, for, for just, you know, for myself personally. Yeah. I mean, man, you know, artists come from every walk of life, right? So you have artists who've left career driven worlds to paint, um, full time and to create art. You have artists who went to art school, um, left art school to find a job, 
because you can't afford to be an artist when you leave art school. You got to do something else to to pay for that. You have you have artists that you know go straight into an MFA because man, that world out there is scary, and it seems like an MFA is the quickest way to get into galleries and to do things. And then there's a lot of artists with huge debt from their MFAs that realize, oops, that wasn't that didn't really help me much. Um, then you have people who are just creating on a regular basis for years and years and years and hoping something happens. And the hard part is, is, you know, the art world doesn't ha come with a set of instructions. <laughs> you know, there's no manual that says follow these steps. Like you could go buy a business book or he could go buy a whatever book and learn step by step by step to get to where you want to go. There's no rules. There's no set plan on how to get there. You kind of succeed, fail, fail, succeed on your own. And you learn these lessons along the road of what the art world wants from you, what it doesn't want from you, what's acceptable, what doesn't. Well, and I think, you know, what, what that makes me think of is just the, um, um, uh, it's one thing to know where you want to go. It's also important. It's also, it's another thing to know, like, what are the checkpoints, um, you know, to get there. And to your point, all of the different, um, you know, micro adjustments and, and, and changes that are necessary along the way, you know, to ultimately get to whatever the end goal, you know, might be. Yeah. So in sort of unpacking that quote, you know, there's ways of getting almost anywhere you want to go, right? So if we really dissect that, like, cool, not just there's a way, but there's ways, there's options, you yeah. know, um, there's not a direct path, you know, everyone, especially in something as, you know, subjective and fickle as, as, uh, as, as art, um, there's not going to be a one size fits all, you know, paint by number, um, you know, path to get from where you are to where you want to go. I think the part of this quote that really resonates with me and, 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 and causes me to pause is, you know, if you really want to go, you know, like that last part. So, yeah. you yep. know, what I take from that is that there has to be some pretty strong, uh, you know, fuel in the tank, right? There has to be a desire. There has to be a passion. There has to be, you know, something that's going to push and pull us through, um, you know, the challenging times, the ups and downs that are inevitably, uh, you know, going to come. Right. So I wonder if you could talk about like, you know, how to, I'm not, I'm not even sure how to phrase this as a question, but I'm just thinking about, you know, how do I, how do I know if I really want to go? What is, what is, what is really wanting to go? What is having that sort of fire? Um, you know, what does that even look like and how does one then translate it, assuming that it's there, um, you know, into the day to day, you know, uh, activities required to, to make the, to, to make the journey. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't even really thought about that part <clears throat> until you just brought that up because being a full-time artist or trying to be an artist in the art world is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> like, this is the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. And I've done quite a few things. Um, and this is the most difficult. And, you know, when I left to go full time as, as a studio artist, I visited one of my former professors out in California, um, the sculptor, William Catling and laid out all my work. We talked, we sat and talked and he just said, I want to let you know, like you're about to enter the most difficult point of your life the most beautiful, joyful part, but also the most difficult. Um, and now I know what he means. <laughs> it is not easy, but I really wanted to go right. It's how bad yeah. do you want it? Because you're going to struggle. You're going to suffer. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be confused. You're not going to have rules. You're going to fail. Right. And, and you're going to be alone most of the time. <laughs> like there's a lot <laughs> of things, but at the end of the day, if your goal is to be a studio artist, I want to get into galleries. I want to impact the world with my art or my community with my art or my city or my state or my country, you know, vice versa. I want to be in museums. I want a legacy with my art, all these questions that artists, you know, should be having with themselves to figure out where they want to go. At the end of the day, you're going to be spending a whole lot of time alone in your studio by yourself. How bad do you want it? Because you're probably going to have to work a part-time job. You may have to work a full-time job. Because just because you're making a lot of art doesn't mean you're going to sell a lot of art right away, right? There's, there's a grand myth of the art star, right? Because we know of the Basquiat's, right? We know of these young painters that movies are made of that become celebrity in our eyes. But it's like there's so few of those. <laughs> the, those aren't lining the history of, you know, art. There's a lot of 60, 70, 80-year-olds who finally made it an art after lots of years. And when I say make it, I don't mean wealthy. <laughs> I mean, supporting the practice, right? Paying rent, getting food, buying art supplies, none left at the end of the day. Does that make sense? Right. Yep. 
Yeah. Well, you know, and, and as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, there, there is an inverse relationship between how difficult the path to get someplace is and the amount of desire required, you know, yeah. to, to make the journey. Right. Um, you know, especially a journey that is not, um, you know, it's, 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 you're, 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 it's disorienting, right? You don't always even know where you are, you know, on the map, so to speak. Right. There is a, um, you know, this could, this could be a, a completely separate conversation entirely, but I'm going to bring it up now because I, I, didn't, I didn't connect these dots until we started talking here, yeah. but, um, there is a quote, um, from Alice in Wonderland. Um, and the Cheshire, I can never, do. I can never say Cheshire, the Cheshire cat. <laughs> yeah, that one, <laughs> you know, the cat, there's, there's only one cat, I think in that, you know, so let's just go with that. But, um, that cat's <laughs> cat says, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And this is when, um, you know, that's from Alice in Wonderland by, uh, by Lewis Carroll. And that's, a, you know, of course, when Alice was, you know, asking for directions and, and didn't really know where she wanted to go, right? Um, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So it's almost the exact, in a way, the exact opposite, um, you know, of this quote that we're, that we're discussing, um, you know, today. But the takeaway for, you know, from, from that quote for me is um, it's, it's really important to have an idea about where, where you want to go with the understanding that it's not permanent. You know, this is something that I had, you know, thousands of conversations over the years in my previous life in the, in the business world and talking about different goals and objectives with people. Um, you know, and I think that one of the sort of common misnomers about goals is that, especially long-term goals, is that once you pick a 5, 10, 20, you're, like that's the goal, you know, and that it, 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 it can't change. And, man, I can't think of a single goal that I've, you know, set you know, some I've hit way more than that I've missed, but I can't think of a single one that was you know, longer than a day that didn't evolve and change, you know, as time goes on. We're different people, you know, today than we were, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. last year, um, you know, last month for that matter, you know. So I think the, um, so A, I'm a couple, couple softballs here. A, just the, um, you know, uh, the importance of knowing, of having a target with the full understanding that it, it's not forever, you know, it may be something, it probably will be something that changes as you go. The important thing is to have a destination. If you and I say, you know, hey, we're going to go out, you know, for, uh, for lunch today and, uh, you know, we think, yeah, let's, let's go, let's go get some Italian. Great. Um, but then on the way, we're like, oh, you know what, actually... There's this new barbecue place I wanted to check out. We can change the destination. The important thing is that whoever's driving knows where the heck we're going and can make those little adjustments, you know, along the way. So um, maybe you can talk about just, um, you know, the importance of having uh, um, a willingness for the goal or for the destination to sort of adjust and evolve, um, you know, as, as we do as artists and as human beings. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> there are so many, uh, you know, Goals with art is such a, a different, a different one because, you know, you have career goals, right? I, I want to be in a gallery. I want to be in galleries. Um, I would like to show in a museum. I would like my work to be in museums. Um, I would like to sell art. I'd like to sell more than one piece of art, right? You, there's all these different things, but then also as the artist, you better have some pretty darn strong goals in the studio. <laughs> I want my work to get to this point. I want to get here. You know, I want to work large scale. I want to work smaller scale, right? You have to have these goals with your work side by side with these goals for where you want your work to go in the end, right? I love Anthony Tapas, right? I love the Spanish uh, informalist. I love that movement of work. I have a lot of resemblance in my work from those because I'm inspired by them and inspire me. I want to do things with cement and with stucco and with cardboard, the way Anthony Tapas does it. I have goals for my work to take traits of those pieces and those styles I love within my work, right? So I better be practicing and working on those regularly to get those in, all the while pressing forward career-wise, right? Now I'm gonna get really mm -hmm. vulnerable here because part of what we really wanna do with this podcast is be vulnerable, right, as working artists. Um, I have big goals. I have galleries, I have dealers, I have 60 plus paintings out and sculptures in the world, right? Currently in places, right? Um, they're currently between California, Houston, um, and a few other places. And 
it's out. I don't know what's going to happen with that, right? Is it going to sell? Is it not going to sell? It's probably going to sell less than more. Maybe if I'm lucky, it sells more than less, but I don't know, you know? And so when we get to that part that you just talked about in Langston's quote from, thank you, ma'am, if you really want to go, right? If, do you have the guts and the wherewithal to really battle in your studio and with yourself? Because I haven't sold a piece in a while. All that works out. Now it's real easy for me to sit in the corner of my studio and go, something's wrong, right? Hmm. doesn't mean something's Mm -hmm. wrong, right? It doesn't. Maybe it does. You got to listen to the negative and the positive. You have to take it all in and talk about why is it not selling? Is it not? What's the deal? Oh, well, new year, pandemic, right? You have all these things, but it's real easy to sit there and go, this is too hard. This is so difficult right now and really, you know, get depressed over it. Honestly, like we artists, we're artists. We deal with those emotions. It's like, man, maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I'm not there yet. Well, instead let's discover that there are ways of getting where I want to go through that. Right. Let's battle through, let's press through, let's keep going and go, how do I get past this? How do I battle these? I'm just going to create, keep creating work, keep creating work, keep pushing. Well, and that's one of the things you, you just reminded me of. That's one of the, one of the things that's so inspiring about this quote is that, um, there's always going to be things that we can point to external variables outside our control and say, Oh, that's why, or that's probably why a B or a B C or D isn't happening, you know, but when you think about, you know, uh, who said this and when it was said and all of the tremendous obstacles that, you know, not knowing everyone's individual situation, everyone's path is different, but you know, for the most part, um, most of us aren't dealing with this, with his level, <laughs> Right. of obstacles and right. things that yep. he had to overcome that were outside of his control. Um, you know, so this is a situation where, you know, not just the quote itself, but, um, you know, the person who said it and the time that they were living in, you know, um, it, it matters, it matters a lot. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's not to say that pretend that, you know, live in a, a fairy tale, you know, where everything's perfect and that, you know, these very real challenges, the, the time that we're going through right now, you know, aren't real. Of course they are. Um, but it's kind of back to that whole, you know, um, I guess interpretation or, or mindset that I was talking about before, of like, can I control this? Right. <laughs> you know, is this within my, is this, is this in the, you know, four square feet that I occupy? If yes, awesome. Like, let me, let me what, what can be done? Let's figure out a way, a way to solve it. But everything else, and I'm not trying, it's not a bury your head in the sand and pretend as though there's not a pandemic going on or that any of the things that, that are going right. out in the world that may or may not help or hurt us, you know, um, you know, aren't there, but how much time and energy we put into thinking about, you know, those things and pointing to those things is this is why things are or aren't happening. Um, that's time that we would probably be better spent, um, you know, focusing on the things that we can control, which is, you know, to your point, getting into a consistent practice and continue to make, you know, more new work. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's the most important part, right? making work and constantly creating and developing and experimenting and taking those risks and making a lot of work, but there's a whole other half to the game, right? How do you get your work out there? What is your goal? Is your goal just to make art period? That's it. Not share it with the world, not get it out there. I mean, if that's your goal, I mean, that's great. Like I'm an art for art's sake. I'm not in it to get rich. I'm not in it to get wealthy. I want to make money. I want to sell paintings. I want people to hang them in their homes. I want galleries to sell them. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm in it for art. I want to make the best art I can make over my lifetime until I'm gone from this planet. And hopefully because of my dedication to that, I create some really strong work in the process, but I have to also spend time trying to get to the point where I can sell the work and it can be out there and people can buy it and hang it in their homes and put it in art fairs and museums, blah, 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 which means I have to do work on that part, right? I have to research galleries. I have to look at local galleries, Texas galleries, outside of Texas, different states. Where does my work fit? How does it fit? Who's going to like it? Um, Should I submit to this group show? What residency should I apply to, right? There's this whole other side of being an artist outside of just creating the work, right? But at the end of the day, if the work's not there, then all those people and all those places you're going after, they're not going to take a chance on you if your work's not there yet. So it's a very delicate and difficult balance, but both are key and both are very important. 
So what about, um, you know, maybe we can speak to the person or, or I'll ask you to speak to the person who's, you know, kind of, you know, not sure, um, you know, where they're, where they're trying to go. Maybe they're kicking around a few different, um, you know, whatever potential paths or, or things that they, that may, may be of interest to them. Um, you know, so if somebody came to you and said, I, you know, I, I, I know all I know for sure is I love making art, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, I love being an artist. I love being engaged in, in a creative practice, but I really don't know, you know, where, where I ultimately, you know, want to go if we try to, you know, sort of, um, boil us down to a more tangible takeaway. Um, you know, what advice would you give somebody who's just sort of trying to figure out wh- where they may even want to be, uh, want to be shooting for or, or what, what a reasonable goal might be? Yeah, this is a regular conversation I have um, with artists that I've mentored. So I've got 32, I think 32 artists from over 12 countries around the world from all different levels um, of art from beginning, emerging, mid-career. Um, and this is a question that a lot of artists ask, especially in the beginning, right? Um, and I always tell artists, there's no wrong answer right? You choose what you want to do. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. You don't have to listen to anybody else, right? It's your choice to decide how you want to navigate the art world and where you fit in it, right? Just because we love to paint doesn't mean we're not supposed to be an art critic or an art blogger or an art writer. We can still create, but maybe our fit in the art world is to write about art. Maybe our fit in the art world is, um, you know, beyond creating, but this is, this is the best time in the history of the world, probably to be an an artist because you have so many options today that didn't exist 10, 15, 20 years ago. Right? So if an artist doesn't want to go the gallery route, I don't want to do that. I don't want to give up commission. I don't want to, you know, invest in somebody else trying to sell my work for me. You can build a website and sell your own work from your website, right? You can use a platform like Sachi art to sell your work. You can, there are, you can use Instagram, to just sell your work on Instagram, period, right? It's all in your own hands. Your decision is yours mm-hmm. and there's no wrong answer. There's no right or wrong, right? There isn't, that's the wrong, your choice is wrong. Well, if that's what you feel like doing and do it. Um, if your goal is to be in the gallery world, then there are ways to go that route, right? If you want to sell from your website, well, you got to get good at doing those things. You got to learn how to sell. You got to learn how to build your website and do shopping cart stuff and all those tedious things that most artists don't want to do. Um, but you have options today that didn't exist. You could start your own virtual gallery and show other artists, right? And build something that's just a community of artists where you have a virtual gallery where you're showing artwork of other artists that you've met on Instagram around the world, right? Now you're helping other artists. You're becoming a curator, right? Plenty of curators on Instagram, you know, from the Alexander Jackerts to the, you know, abstract Dukes to, um, minute 16, all these great, you know, curators who have brilliant eyes and they're just curating art probably because they love it. They may have been artists at one point in their life or they love to paint or create, but they realize I have a lot more strength in this arena than in this one. Um, so there's no wrong place. It's just figuring out where you're most comfortable and where you really want to go. Well, and you brought up something that's really important that um, that I think is uh, is definitely worth discussing, which is you know as, as I've heard you refer to it as the the shit work, right? Yeah. All of the yep. things that need to be done uh, to really accomplish you know what whatever you might be be yeah. trying to do. And um, you know, it's funny I, I, I've I've shared this story with a number of people over the years, but um, I was uh, gosh, I, was, I think I was probably in, in college, and we were spending the weekend at a buddy's uh, buddy's house or buddy's, uh, lake place. Right. And his, um, and his dad had been very successful and, um, had, uh, you know, run and, and sold numerous businesses, real, real nice lake place. Anyway, we're sitting down to dinner one night. Um, and we're just kind of talking to Bob and picking his brain and, and, uh, you know, whatever, just asking questions, um, really indirect questions, but basically like, Hey, I don't matter. We maybe have a place like this <laughs> yeah, someday. Um, you know, one of the things that he said, uh, that always stuck with me was one of his first businesses, um, was in, uh, uh, garbage disposal. You know, he said, I saw an opportunity, um, to buy a, 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 a garbage company, a trash, a trash, uh, um, you know, disposal company. Um, and, uh, everybody thought I was, I was crazy. You know, the people that knew me the best said, what are you, what are you doing? Why do you want to be hauling garbage? Um, and I'll never forget this. He said, I didn't want to be hauling garbage. I didn't want to be involved in the garbage business, but I realized that that was something that made complete sense for me to do to get to where I ultimately wanted to go. Um, 
and I think about that just in a, in a much more, you know, in much more simple terms. But all the things, you know, so share, you know, a bit about my story. You know, when I left the business world, I was like, oh, sweet. Don't have to worry about, you know, emails or <laughs> schedules yeah. or, you know, having to. And it's like, dude, like, wake up. You know, like, these are realities of pretty much anything that you might, you know, want, want to do. So there's always going to, the point is, there's always going to be an element or pieces um, of what we want to do that we're not going to love. It doesn't mean that we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. It just means that, you know, there are things that we may not love every single aspect of, you know, uh, you know, fill in the blank with your dream career and somebody who's walking that walk today is waking up being like, damn it, I got to do, <laughs> you know, oh, I want to be a pro- professional athlete. Okay, cool. That person's got to wake up, you know, sore, hardly able to, you know, limp their way to the bathroom in the morning and they got to get ready to go perform every day, you know, blah, blah, whatever, fill in the blank. But there's always going to be something that you don't love doing. Um, so it's important to embrace the necessity of, of doing those things, understanding that they serve, you know, the bigger goal. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I mean, you gotta, gotta work at it. I mean, let's see last week. I mean, I was down with COVID. Um, so I wasn't really in the studio, but I spent all my time going through residencies and applying to artist residencies, right? I don't want to sit in front of a computer and, you know, I'm a dork. So I learned ways for me to be organized in a way that is probably different than most people. So I've got spreadsheet after spreadsheet of dream galleries, galleries I fit in, galleries I want to be in someday on spreadsheets, right? And I keep track of all these things. And, you know, I was going through them yesterday. I was spending time literally just going through my spreadsheet because man, there's a lot of those galleries that unfortunately closed their doors during the pandemic. It was heartbreaking. Um, and so, but I'm on spreadsheets, I'm researching residencies and where do I fit? Is this a good residency to apply for? Um, you know, looking at all the things they require, all the things that, you know, come with that residency, um, researching it, looking at the curators, looking at the jurors for group shows, um, researching people. Oh, I, you know, heard about these new curators in Fort Worth or in Dallas. Who are they? Where are they from? What kind of art do they like? So I spend that time doing that shit work um, and then making notes and keeping track because, man, it's so easy for me to forget. I spend so much time painting in my studio. I'm so focused on the work that if I don't write it down and keep a spreadsheet of it, I'm going to forget everything I saw earlier that morning when I get in studio mode and I'm working. So, um, yeah, it's those two sides I talked about earlier, right? You want to spend as much of your time making, but you got to spend time researching and trying to find out where you fit if that's your goal. But I tell my artists all the time that I mentor, experiment experiment with things, figure it out. Where's your fit? You know, what are ways you could bring in a little money on the side to pay for new materials? Can you just sell $50 paper pieces and studies on Instagram? You know, you sell 10 of those 50 bucks. That's a good little check to, you know, go buy some paint and get some canvas and some supplies. So experiment the hell out of it. What advice would you give somebody who's, um, all right, so they've, uh, they've got, they've got a goal. They know what they ultimately, you know, want to be. They acknowledge that it's, um, you know, a few steps, you know, down the road. Um, you know, I think it's important to begin with the end in mind, right. To have, to, to have at least an idea, um, that's current of, of, of what the, the, the destination is and what we're trying to accomplish, but also, um, then being able to reverse engineer back to, okay, what are the checkpoints along the way? Um, you know, for somebody who maybe doesn't have a mentor or doesn't have access to someone who, you know, knows a little bit more than they do, um, you know, gosh, how do I, you know, how do I, how do I figure this out? Like, how do I get, how do I make something more tangible, more short term, you know, to know that I'm, you know, on the way. And that's not an easy question. Yeah. There's a lot in there. Um, you know, I had no idea how to get to where I wanted to go. Right. When I, when I left to paint full time. And to be a full-time studio artist, I knew what my goals were. I want to be in galleries. I want to take that and other steps someday and hopefully hang in museums. Lofty goals, right? <laughs> no small, no small goals, right? This is a very rare percentage of artists that actually get to live that life. But those are my goals, and that's where I'm at. No idea how to get there. So I just read, man. I studied. I researched my butt off. I I have read so many artist journals and you know, artist writings and books. Um, constantly. And I, I found that my confidence grew because I read all the art books, right? How to do it, what to do, all those things. But then I got more into the philosophical side of art. So I started reading those books. 
Um, and then I found by reading artist journals, um, that just gave me so much confidence to read stories and read from tr from the artist's words, their struggles that they had no idea how to do it either. Whether it's 1920, 1940, 1960, that they had no idea how to do it either. Um, and so I kept hearing their voices, male and female, um, you know, saying the same words I'm saying today, or I said four years ago that I may say in two years, but it was just this echo. It was an echo chamber, right? Which to me was a confidence builder. Picasso said it, Joan Miro said it, Frankenthaler said it, Joan Mitchell said it. And you know, George O'Keefe said it. I keep hearing these artists that, that I love saying things that I was saying right now, right? It just gave me that confidence to go, listen, these are the artists in museums are the ones we know. Um, and for me to hear them say, to know what I have put in front of me for my own goals was just a confidence builder. Like at the end of the day, we need to be building confidence in ourselves. And I found for me, that's been the best practice to build that confidence as I went out and tried to hit these milestones or try to, you know, figure ways to get my work out into the world I want to be in. Yeah. It's funny how much, um, how much encouragement can be gained from just realizing that, uh, all the greats are just people too. Yeah. Absolutely. That they had the same, you know, doubts and fears and insecurities and, um, you know, challenges along the way. And, and, uh, you know, unless, unless you do that research, unless you do that reading and, and, and really dig in, um, you know, all you're doing is all, all you're able to do really is, is just, you know, look at the finished work, the best of the best, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the credits and all of the accomplishments and say, oh, that just must've been that way for them, you know, the, <laughs> the entire time, which of course is not, um, is not true. Um, I'm, I'm curious for you, um, you know, uh, I don't, it sounds as though your, your overall objective, you know, has not, has not changed since you decided to, uh, you know, go full time. But what, um, I'm curious how many, could you give an example or two of how sort of the path, you know, may have, you know, changed, um, how there have been some twists and turns along the way that you just, you know, could not have known, you know, were coming, but just ended up being a part of the, uh, you know, the overall story. Yeah. I mean, when I, I mean, I, I was always painting and creating, um, since I left college, which was 1999. Um, and so I was always painting, and creating always, um, but didn't know how hard it was going to be to actually become a stronger artist and get my work out into the world. Um, and so when I, I was always doing little shows, you know, here and there group shows in Dallas, Denton area, um, Austin, um, Fort Worth. And I was doing a lot of my own shows. So friends of mine, we would, we'd go empty out a barn in Denton, Texas, um, and sweep it out and hang work and invite everybody out and have, you know, two, three, 400 people show up for an art show. And it was just one night openings, but I'd find apartment complexes that had a hallway and show my work there, coffee shops. Like I was always trying to build the resume, right? That's the key show work anywhere. Doesn't matter. My house, I would, you know, empty the house and do a show in the house. I'd do it in the garage when we had a house, like always trying to fill the resume with shows. Right. And then that, you know, took a turn people would start to notice. And so, you know, would get in a group show in a gallery in Dallas or in Fort Worth or Houston or other places, you know, you know, you know, the Texas biannuals type things like that, where it's new Texas artist series, like, you know, weaving my way in. Um, and then honestly, Instagram was the big jump. Um, you know, when Instagram started to explode is when I started to really share my process and share my work. And, you know, as Austin Kleon says, I was a documentary documentarian of what I did. Um, when I read his hmm. book, show your work, I went, Oh, now I, I need to start showing how I do it and what I do and see if I can get any traction. I started to be really vulnerable about my struggles and talking about it and not just my struggles with work, but my struggles with being a working artist. And that vulnerability, I think, led to people starting to take notice at a time when art really exploded on Instagram. And so then I had some galleries and dealers start reaching out here and there. And there were some that were failures that, you know, wonderful people that I did stuff with, but then nothing flew, you know, nothing really happened. But CV, notch on the CV, right? I can add a line on that resume, which is important. Um, did a residency in Budapest, um, got accepted to certain residencies I turned down. And so it was kind of all over the place, but just kind of trying everything I could. And I learned, I made mistakes along the way because gallery owners would say, Hey, you should never do X. And I'd go shoot. I had no idea. And they go, well, sorry. 
<laughs> sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but we can't work with you now because you, you know, had prices on your website. We were interested. Now we're not. So it's like, you know, mm -hmm. you learn these little things that are, you know, not accepted or are accepted and you just have to kind of go with the flow and change it, change as you go. And as you learn, um, if that answers the question. It, it does. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, maybe to bring things full circle, I, I, uh, there, there's something else that jumped out about the quote and you just referenced it, um, you know, as well, but, um, you know, the quote begins with, I'll read the whole thing again, but I have discovered in life mm. that there are ways of getting almost anywhere you want to go if you really want to go. Yep. And, uh, I think that discovered word is really important as well. You know, if you think about and just break down like what it means to discover something, um, it's not being handed, you know, a playbook. It's not being told, Hey, Oh, you want to go there? Just, yeah. Take a right, take a couple lefts, go for, you know, it'll be on the right. You know, yep. um, it, there's a discovery process and the only way to do something, especially on a path like this one, where it's not a straight line, um, is to be engaged in the process of discovering. And a lot of it comes down to faith, right? And trust that, yeah. all right, this is going to take me, if it does, to your point, if it, if it doesn't take me in the exact direction I'm trying to go, um, it'll at least, you know, Thomas Edison, you know, crossed off, you know, whatever, 10,000 ways that, you know, to not make a light bulb. Right. Um, so I think just embracing, uh, the discovery of all of it, um, is probably a good, um, you know, just, you know, thing to keep in mind, understanding that, you know, discovery doesn't just happen where you, you know, walk right to the X marked on the spot and find the treasure. You got, you got to dig, get a look, you got to, you know, dig a lot of empty, empty holes before you, you know, hit pay dart. Right. Yeah. I mean, and live for discovery people, you know, yeah. live for discovery. The more time you put in, you're going to discover things, right? Look for that nourishment. Look for those miracles within your work, you know, as you're creating and spending time, like, man, live for discovery. Like if you're just going through the motions every day and you're not trying to really discover things in your work itself, you know, what are you, why are you doing it? Why are you creating like live for that discovery? I mean, I find it all the time. I go, Oh, why have I never thought of that? Or, Oh my gosh, you know, that's how they did it. Right. I'm always trying to find those moments where it's like this boom, you know, as, as Basquiat would say, you know, boom, duck man, you know, it's just like, there it is. That's it. Wow. That's beautiful. How did I do that? you know, and then take it to the next step. Like, I think that's why Picasso is such a genius in his work. He was always, always on the search for discovery. You know what I mean? He knew he couldn't get to something new if he wasn't constantly trying to discover. And what happened? He continually created new, new, new idea, new idea, new idea, right? He knew that the vision was so far ahead of him. If he wasn't sprinting towards it hard, he may not get there instead of walking towards it, right? He's like yeah. head down mm -hmm. working. So yeah, live for discovery. Well, and that's, that's probably a good place to end too, because I think that, uh, you know, as important and critical as it is to have a destination in mind, let's not forget about the journey. Yeah. <laughs> Realize that the, the journey is required. And if we don't find a way to embrace and enjoy the process, yep. um, then best case, we're only going to be fulfilled, you know, and, uh, and happy at the very end of the finish line, which that's not a, uh, that's not a life that I'd be too excited about. So yeah. The journey matters. Yeah. The journey matters. And, um, for everybody out there that listened today, um, go buy a Langston Hughes book, um, this week when you're done, um, buy any one of his poetry books by the weary blues, um, go, go study up on Langston Hughes and just learn about, especially if you're, you know, especially if you're an American citizen, um, if, I don't care where you are, go buy Langston Hughes books, but especially if you're an American man, you, you need to go learn about somebody that is a backbone of American poetry and fiction, um, and literature, um, who withstood more odds than, uh, most of us, um, can even imagine at a time and take it even a step further and go research the, the Harlem Renaissance as well. Um, I think you're going to be blown away by the impact um, that the Harlem Renaissance had on the art world and its future in America, especially in New York, which, you know, we all know is the mecca um, of the art world. So um, do yourself a favor and do a little, uh, little research this week. I love that. Anything else before we close? Nope. Find Nathan and I on Instagram. We'd love to love to hang out and, and talk to you. Um, so if not, uh, then we'll see your faces or see your texts or your, your, voices another time but uh tune in we'll see you on the next episode over now have a great one